So it's been a bit more than a year since I got the toolbox and fall in love of it. And it didn't take too long time to become an essential part of my gear, whether I'm working on an audio or video production, design or just editing photos. This little box controller became my best friend to the point that I take it with me all the time on my backpack. So no matter where I am, it will be always with me to save the day. But of course, things happen and I forgot it a couple of times on my work, something that I hate because it's a waste of time to pick it up, especially on weekends, time that can be used on other projects. And with the release of the Toolbox Neo, there's no better time to get a second Toolbox so that I can carry one with me all the time and leave one of my studio. What's going on guys, Anders here, and today we're gonna take a look at the Toolbox Neo. We're gonna check out all of its new features and compare it with the regular version. As well, I'm gonna be giving you a couple of tips that could improve your performance and skill while using the Toolbox. But before that, I want to invite you all to check out my second channel where I'm producing music from video games and movies. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Inside the box, we are getting the same as the original version. So we get a type A to type C USB cable, the toolbox itself, the user manual, and the quick guide installation. In my previous review, I was mentioning that it would be really nice to have a hard case to transport the toolbox. And it looks like Toolbox actually listened because on this new version, I was able to choose a hard case. So Toolbox team, if you're watching this video, thumbs up to that. It's really good to see that some companies actually listen to the customer feedback. Now, when we compare the design, it looks the same as its predecessor with its fancy ergonomic shape and the same positioning buttons, but with a minor difference. The back type A USB port was removed, but I didn't really use it so there's no big loss on that. It also has some significant changes on the internal component that improve its performance with a different touch feeling, especially on the knob and dial. Now they have a pressing button, meaning that you can do more shortcut combinations. They also have more slide resistance, which helps you to have better precision. For example, when you are moving the timeline of Premiere, doing a zoom in of photo, or just increasing and decreasing the Photoshop brush tool, you will feel more precision and smoothness. With all these hardware changes, it's more than expected to see some improvements in the software. First, we got a new function that auto-detects the current software and it switches the preset to match the program on what are you working on. This function is a straightforward to set up. You simply turn on the auto-switch function, then go to the preset and assign the program that you want. Make sure that the program that you want to assign to the preset is open Otherwise, it won't appear on the applications list. You can always decide to use or not this function and assign the presets manually, but I highly recommend you to use this option. There is also a global process function integrated, which will be switched on when you are not editing. For example, if you have a preset dedicated to when you are browsing online, watching videos, or just working on simple stuff, then you can assign it as a global process and it will be always active when you are not using any of the other program presets. Now, my favorite new function is the Timeline Pointer. This function allows you to move the Timeline Pointer dynamically on any software video by using the knob, the scroll or the dial. This is amazing because I use the mouse to do this, but now everything is more smooth with this function. If creating preset is not your thing and you just want to connect the Toolbox and start working, don't worry because Toolbox has three previewed presets for you, one from Premiere, one for Lightroom and one for Photoshop. If your preferred software is not here, you can always go to the Toolbox website, click on the download button, then go to presets and you will find a list of presets for different softwares made by the Toolbox artist. Now it's time to give you some tips made on my personal experience with the Toolbox. The first thing that you need to know is that after using this device, you will probably stop using your keyboard or well, at least 90% of the time. So the first thing that I recommend you is to create a preset with the keyboard shortcuts that you use the most. By the way, I already showed how to do this on my Toolbox review. I will leave the video linked on the description below. I highly suggest you when creating these presets, try to make the same motion that you use on your keyboard. So when you start using the Toolbox, your hand memory doesn't take too long to adapt. For example, to copy is Ctrl C. I usually use my thumb and my index finger in diagonal to press on the keyboard. So on the toolbox, you can make a similar motion by pressing the down button and the tall button. Of course, 
You don't always need to copy the keyboard motion. You can always create macros and press a single button to simulate various button combinations. But the longer time that you have using the toolbox, you will develop your own button combinations. Another tip is to place the toolbox in a place that feels comfortable and natural to your hands. In my case, I have different setups depending on what I'm working on, but no matter what, I always try to rest my hands aligned horizontally and on a comfortable position. So play around with your setup till you find the position that feels the best. Overall, as I said on my first toolbox review, I love it. And I know that I repeat this a lot, but I will put it like this. If you ask me that I could keep only one peripheral from all the products that I ever review on my channel, I will answer you with no hesitation, the toolbox. And the why, it will be easy to answer because it makes me faster while producing content, it's easy to use, it's comfortable, and it's so tiny that I can take it with me everywhere. And that's all for today's video. If you liked the video, don't forget to give that thumbs up, share, subscribe, and smash that notifications bell. On that way, you won't miss any of our future videos and content. This is Anders, see you next time.